Welcome back, physics fans. Do you know that from the start of the year, we have been working on the same problem? Today, we take one more step in that direction. By the end of class today, you will be able to apply the second law and the big six equations of kinematics to problems utilizing algebra to enhance problem solving. I know. Algebra? I hate algebra. Well, life's a word problem. You just can't get away from the mathematics. So, Newton's second law, deceptively simple, F equals MA. By the time we're done, these will be the hardest problems of the year. We keep adding to them step by step, so it's important that you take each of these small steps so the problems don't overwhelm you. Let's now take Newton's second law and add kinematics in the big six. You remember the big six equations for kinematics. We've used these in the last chapter. We'll be applying those now to what we have with Newton's law. Well, we started with um, given mass and an acceleration, and we're told to find the applied force. No problem. F is MA. Now, on our next step, we added algebra to this. You were given a force and a mass, but no given acceleration. How do you solve Newton's second law for acceleration? Well, F is MA, easy enough to get mass from one side to the other. Acceleration is now force divided by the mass. And now what? Kinematics. Newton's second law, easily uh, algebraically manipulated to solve for acceleration, and then use that acceleration in the big six equations of kinematics. Well, how will it work? Well, what if we are given a force, a mass, an initial velocity, and a time? and told to solve for final velocity. A daunting task from the looks at it, but break it into simpler, easier to handle steps. First, start with Newton's second law. Well, we know that Newton's second law says F equals MA, and it's easy enough to algebraically manipulate this for acceleration. So A is F over M. Now that I have my acceleration, now what? Now look at the kinematics. Look at the kinematics equations. One of these has final velocity, if I know initial velocity, acceleration, and time. Which one? And there it is. So with the givens that I have, with two steps and a little algebra, I can find what my future velocity will be. Let's look at another. What if we are given the force, the mass, the initial velocity, and the time. This time told to find displacement. Well, it's easier in smaller steps. First, start with Newton's second law, F is MA. And with a little algebra, I have my acceleration. Now what? Well, now kinematics. One of these equations has displacement, if I know initial velocity, acceleration, and time. Which one? Right there, the displacement equation. So with these givens, I can solve for how far I will be at some future point. How about if instead we are given the force, the mass, the initial velocity, and the displacement, no time, and told to find the final velocity. Well, again, start with Newton's second law. F is MA, and with a little easy algebra, I can determine the acceleration. And now what? The kinematics. Notice with this one, I don't have time anywhere as a given. Well, when I look at my big six equation for kinematics, only one of those does not have time as a variable. Makes this one an easy choice, the V squared equation. So with these givens and what I'm looking for, I would need 
first of all, Newton's second law, then the v squared equation solved for final velocity. Now, lastly, what if we are given a force, a mass, and final velocity, and time, and told to find the displacement? Well, again, it's easier to do it in small steps, so I grab Newton's second law, F is MA, and it's easy to do just a little bit of algebra, and I have the acceleration. And now what? The kinematics. Only one of the big six equations has displacement if I know final velocity, acceleration, and time. And there it is. So with these givens and what we're looking for, I would use the final velocity form of the displacement equation. Well, let's take it out for a test spin and see what happens. Whenever I have a physics problem, the first thing I have to do is, indeed, a 1964 and a half Ford Mustang. True story. Ford wanted to make sure they got ahead of the pack, so they brought out a new car in March rather than September. And that was the 64 and a half Mustang. They were fun cars. Europe had had fun little cars for decades. And Chevy, of course, had the Corvette. Ford wanted into this, but they wanted something that everybody could drive. It came with three models, the convertible, the hardtop, or the fastback, racing stripes, and a fun little interior. Bucket seats so that each passenger in the front had their own individual seat, and a four-speed manual transmission on the floor attached to, well, usually... A 4.9 liter, 289 cubic inch, two barrel Ford V8. Now it was a fun little motor, but it wasn't the real muscle people wanted. Well, within two years, you would be able to order, instead of the 289, the Shelby Cobra Le Mans 7 liter, 427 cubic inch inch V8 racing motor with two four barrel carburetors. So each of those cylinders in that V8 motor had a targeted carburetor port acting on it. And that would move them around. Within a couple years, Shelby brought out their own model, came with multiport fuel injection. And either one of those seven liter motors with Two barrel, two four barrel carburetors or multiple port fuel injection. Either one would smoke them off in all four gears. Not only that, in the hands of somebody who knew what they were doing, it would pick them up and move you down the road in a hurry. So, those Mustangs, a 64 and a half Ford Mustang with a mass of 800 kilograms starts at an initial velocity of 15 meters per second and is accelerated by a force of 5,250 newtons. Determine the car's acceleration and the final velocity of the car after five seconds. Read it. After I read it, I... And there's that Ford Mustang with a fast back. It's an 800 kilogram mass and starts at 15 meters per second. They apply a force of 5,250 newtons for five seconds. Read it, diagrammed it. After I diagram it, now I write my mass at 800 kilograms, my initial velocity at 15 meters per second. A force of 5,250 newtons is applied for five seconds. Determine the acceleration and the final velocity. Well, it's daunting if I try to do it all at once, but if I break it down into little parts, it's easier to handle. First, we need to find the acceleration. Well, Newton's second law, deceptively simple, says F equals MA. And with a little algebra, the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. Read it, diagrammed it, written the given so I'm looking for, pick my equation, did the algebra, plug and chug, what do you get? Correct the mundo, 6.56 meters per second squared. 
Well, now I have my acceleration. What will be my final velocity after five seconds? Well, here I need the big six. And one of those will tell me final velocity if I know initial velocity, acceleration, and time. No algebra necessary. Plug and chug. Parentheses are important. What do I get? Forty seven point eight meters per second. Yeah, from fifteen meters per second, thirty miles per hour. With that Ford Mustang and standing on it, you could get yourself up over a hundred miles an hour in five seconds. They would move. But people who know cars that move don't grab Ford Mustangs. They would rather have a 2017 Ferrari 480 GTB coupe. Oh, yeah. This is as close to a race car as you can get. They're hand-built. They're not assembled in a factory. They are incredibly expensive. They are difficult to maintain. And they are a 24-hour of Le Mans race car. I mean, look at the interior on this. The shifters are paddle shifters up on the wheel. All the controls that you would need for the entire car right there at your fingertips while you're driving down the road. And in this car, when you step on it, you're stepping on an Italian V8. But that Italian V8 has dual overhead, turbocharged, multiport, fuel-injected V8 motor will push you up the highway. Well... A 2017 Ferrari 488 GTB with a mass of 1,544 kilograms starts an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. It is accelerated by a force of 35,600 newtons. Determine the car's acceleration, and the final velocity of the car travels a distance of 125 meters. Read it. After I read it, the next thing I always do is... Sure, that Ferrari hopping down the road, a mass of 1,544 kilograms, starts at 15 meters per second with an applied force of 35,600 newtons over a displacement of 125 meters. Read it, diagrammed it. After I diagram it, I, my mass of should be 1,544 kilograms an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, a force applied of 35,600 newtons for a displacement of 125 meters. What's the acceleration and the final velocity? Read it, diagrammed it, written the givens, know I'm looking for, and a tough problem if I try to do it all at once, but simpler if I go step by step. Well, Deceptively simple, Newton's second law says F equals ma, and it's easily manipulated for acceleration. The acceleration is the force divided by the mass, or 35,600 Newtons divided by 1,544 kilograms. Go! What do you get? Correct, 23.06 meters per second squared. Now I have my acceleration. What's my final velocity if I have an initial velocity and a displacement? Well, I don't have time anywhere, so that's a dead giveaway. I need the V squared equation with a square root on everything on the right-hand side so I can solve for final velocity. The square root of V naught squared plus 2AD, and yes, all those parentheses are important and necessary. Read it, diagrammed it, and gives no one looking for. Picked my equation. Plug and chug. Careful. Open a parentheses after the uh, square root sign, then 15 meters per second squared, plus open another parentheses, 2 times 23.06 times 125. Close both parentheses. And what do you get? seventy seven point four meters per second. Oh yeah, that's moving. You're talking from thirty miles per hour to one hundred and eighty miles per hour. Ferrari. They move. 
So you were able to apply the second law and the big six equations of kinematics to problems utilizing algebra to enhance problem solving. Newton's second law, deceptively simple, used to find the acceleration and then that acceleration into the big six equations of kinematics. Well, questions, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I'm always available for my office hours, uh, or you can talk to me during Monday, Wednesday, Friday class periods, or if you are really in a bind, you can email me at srupatfruportschools.net. Talk to you soon.